What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus package update and daily news report for Saturday, April 2nd. So we actually have a lot of unexpected news because what has been coming out over this past week, some, is, some of this has been you know, rather good news, other has been not so great. Now I addressed just the other day that we could potentially see some form of gas relief and we could see the, the pain at the pumps get reduced. But at the same time, when I say this, that there is the expectation that we're gonna see gas prices come down, others are saying that no, it's not really gonna happen. So I wanna address what's actually going on. Because again, as these reports come out, we start to see more studies. We start to see more uh, you know, interviews from lawmakers and from officials. And that's where the truth really comes out. So. Here's what's going on right now. As prices started going up for gasoline, for food, for housing, and everything in between, lawmakers, they started calling on President Biden. They started calling on you know, other lawmakers to, to get together and let's provide more support for the American people, right? And this, the relief, the, the discussions for relief started to increase. Well, at this time, these calls are going unanswered. People are not doing much for the American people right now. Really, the only relief is coming from states and local governments. That's where the relief is coming from. So if you want any stimulus, it's most likely going to come from your state or from your local government. For example, the federal government at this time is highly unlikely to provide any additional relief. And it's not because they don't want to. It's because there's not enough support. That's the reason why. And it's simply due to the fact that lawmakers don't support additional spending in times of high inflation and high uncertainty, which we have both of those at this time. But that doesn't mean that the states do not feel the same way. For example, California is likely to provide additional either stimulus checks or they will provide some form of a gas card. And the reason for this is because they do have additional, uh, they, they have a budget surplus from last year. So they are going to use what they have because guess what? They have to give it back to their residents. That's good news. We know New York is providing residents who didn't previously get a stimulus check the ability to get one now. New York is actually providing about $2 billion towards this bill. In Indiana, their governor wants to provide a $125 tax refund to all residents, again, due to their budget having a surplus from last year. In Florida, and I addressed this before, Florida is gonna give out $1,000 to all teachers and educators. And even Governor Ron DeSantis, he is going to give teachers a raise of roughly $7,500 per year. That's big. That's a huge incentive. Now, now that we know what states are doing and enough with what individual states are doing, let's talk about what President Biden is doing. So here's what we know. And again, if you have questions on any of this stuff, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. But here's what's going on. President Biden is actually taking a lot of heat for things that he has said uh, and done, or, or really at this point, not done. Some of these things include his plans on reducing the pain at the pumps and bringing gas prices back down. Another is his promise to forgive up to $10,000 in student debt. And another is providing affordable food and limit shortages to the American people. Let's address those three things. The first one, eliminating or reducing the pain at the pumps. Well, how's he gonna do this? Well, here's what we know. President Biden's plan is to release 180 million barrels of oil into our economy. That should work, right? Well, some say yes, it's a short-term plan. Others say no, it's not gonna do much. And the reason for this is actually pretty simple. The United States uses about 19 million barrels of oil per day. The 180 million barrels is going to be released a little bit over 1 million barrels per day. So it's not gonna provide a huge amount of relief, at least in the short term. But others say long-term, this would actually hurt us more than it will help us. But Here's the other plan, and this is President Biden's big plan. President Biden wants to place financial penalties on drillers for unused federal permits and also focus on clean energy. Now, a financial penalty on a driller for, for an unused federal permit 
guess what? That is going to impact some of these drillers to, okay, let's, we, we have to start drilling. We have to start pulling oil out of the ground. We have to. So if these are just unused permits just sitting there, what President Biden wants to do is make sure these are getting used in some way. Somebody has to start pulling oil out of the ground. Now, that's great, but at the same time, a financial penalty on some of these companies, and at the same time, President Biden is asking for to focus on clean energy, guess what? These companies are not going to want to uh, invest money back into their, their business, into these companies, to produce even more profits, when at the same time they are worried that our current administration is likely to increase taxes and they will have to pay even more. So in the long run, it would make more sense to not pull more oil out of the ground, not be more profitable, and push their profits back. Because if we see a different president come in, we see Republicans gain control of the House and the Senate, this could completely change things. But again, these, these tax increases are pretty much being held up by one man, that's Senator Joe Manchin. And if he decides to decide with Democrats at any point, these oil companies are going to take a major hit financially. So even though some are saying that, yes, the Biden administration, their plan is to bring prices down, at the same time, it's not likely due to the, the options that they're giving some of these oil companies. So we'll see what happens there. Another promise that President Biden made to forgive him up to $10,000 in student debt. Now, let's touch on this for a second. And here's the reason why. We have less than one month, less than one month until the, the, the student loan payments are now going to be due. The, the payment pause expires the end of April. So as of May 1st, these payments have to be uh, restarted. The problem is many people are not ready. Many people do not have the ability to make these payments. These 300, 400, maybe $500 per month payments. Some people will struggle, especially lower income and middle income households. So what we're hearing right now is President Biden, he has to fulfill this promise. Many lawmakers have said, I think there's like a list of uh, almost 100 lawmakers that said that we need an answer now. He ne we need an answer now. Because again, we got less than a month and these people that have student debt and are going to restart their payments, they need to know what to expect, okay? But here's the other thing. And again, this is another promise that President Biden made is he was going to take care of the American people. He was gonna make sure that we were taken care of in, in tough times, which we are currently still in. But another promise was to provide more nutrition, right? Affordable food, limit shortages, and all those things. And I talked about this the other day that we are seeing a lot of food shortages. And the expectation is food prices are actually gonna go up in the next couple of months. But here's what I can tell you. President Biden stated that the US is going to see some real food shortages and it's gonna be a real problem. But what is he going to do about it? Well, here's what we know. President Biden, he has a lot to do simply because the public health emergency is almost up. When this actually expires on April 15th, in 13 days, in 13 days, millions of Americans that are currently enrolled in collecting SNAP benefits, they will see their benefits get reduced by around $100 per month. Now, the majority of states will be impacted and it will really hurt lower income families. And this is a major issue because President Biden has said, we are going to provide more support but at this time, it's not looking so likely. The other thing that Biden is, has done, or actually has seen, is that lawmakers want to see more production here at home regarding food. Well, how do we do that? Well, just the other day, two senators began joining farm groups and other lawmakers and actually calling for the USDA to allow farmers to plant on conserved land. Now, these two senators wrote to President Biden and they said this, and I quote, Allowing crop production on CRP lands is a critical step for stabilizing food prices that have skyrocketed in recent months. 
and to help American growers fulfill the unmet global demand for grains that threatens the lives of tens of millions of people. Now, we know there's going to be a major shortage. There already is, but it's going to compound. At least that's according to multiple experts. Even the USDA has stated food prices are going to skyrocket even more, right? Meats are going to go up, you know, more than 10%, 10, 12, 14%. It's going to be insane, but that's the thing. Senders are telling President Biden, hey, let's do this. Now, I don't know, you know, the, the ramifications of using CRP lands, but, and I'll, that's something I will look into, but at the same time, if they can produce more, it should normally be a little bit better. So we'll see what happens there. But let's touch on some Russia and Ukraine news for just a second, because this is, is still going to be an ongoing problem. But Ukraine has stated just this morning that Russian troops are pulling back from Kyiv. They are moving slowly, but they say they are pulling back. But here's the issue now. The issue is that, yes, Russian troops are pulling back, but in the meantime, they have planted many mines and tripwires all across the city. They have even, according to multiple reports, planted tripwires on dead bodies. So the issue with this is as, as you know, people come in to help clean up the city and you know, remove dead bodies and, and get rid of the rubble and, and tr hopefully try to rebuild the city, the problem is, they're going to have to navigate around these mines and, and through trip wires, right? Deactivate these things, which right now could be a very sticky situation. So we're going to see what happens there. But according to reports, things will eventually get back to a more normal state, but it will take quite a bit of time. So we will see what happens, but that is what we know at this time. As always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back on, share all latest news and updates again. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.